I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us today at the Azure Academy. And don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you can help support us to keep uh, making videos for you. So today we want to talk about some automation and I want to paint a scenario for you. So here we are in the Azure portal and we're going to go here to this tab and where I've got the monitoring workspace. And in monitoring, we want to go to diagnostic settings. So in diagnostic settings, this is where we collectively can see all of the different resource types where we can enable diagnostic settings. So first of all, what is diagnostic settings? Well, if you missed our video on the Azure Monitor, I'd suggest you go back and watch that in the governance series. But the short of it is when we go into any resource that supports the diagnostic settings, we can set this device up to talk to our log analytics workspace and send its log information there so that we can query on it. Secondarily, we can store the data in a storage account for archive. So I believe the new numbers on Log Analytics is that we'll retain the data in Log Analytics for 200 days. After that, the data gets flushed. If you need the data preserved longer than that, then you should also check this box for the storage account. And then you have this slider to tell you how many days you can retain it for. Additionally, you can send the data to an event hub, and that's if you want to take the data uh, either out of Azure or massage it in another way and send it to another tool, like a Seam tool. Uh, something like uh, the Azure Sentinel wouldn't actually apply here because Azure Sentinel talks directly to Log Analytics. But if you're taking it outside of Azure, maybe to like a Splunk, for example, then you would use the Event Hub. So when we capture the diagnostic settings here, each one of our resources may have a slightly different way of implementing this. So for example, this is for a Key Vault. We can store all of our audit events and the all metric events. If, however, we look at a network interface, the network interface only has all metrics. And if we look at our virtual network gateway, then we can see a, a lot more options here. And that's just resource dependencies. Each one of these has a slightly different configuration. But like I said, this video is about automation. So how can we automate all these different resource types so that we have diagnostic settings configured to send the data to our log analytics workspace? We've got a few options. The one uh, obvious one is we can script it, have that script running in something like Azure DevOps or Azure Automation where it can be scheduled, have that run periodically to find all of your resources that are missing diagnostic settings and configure them. The option, however, that we're going to talk about is a little more, I'll say, elegant. And that's over in Azure Policy. Everything that you're looking at on the screen all depends on your scope. So at the moment, we are looking at two different subscriptions that I have. So you can change this to look at a management group or a sub management group, which then will give you a higher level view of what's going on. And you can also go even deeper by picking simply a resource group level. So at any one of these levels, we can focus in on what's going on in policy. But for the moment, we'll just look at this one subscription. And currently I do not have assignments. So if we go to our definitions here, this tells us what we can assign. So I'm going to look at all custom initiatives and you can see here that the location for all of these initiatives is in my management group. So this subscription has nothing in it as far as custom initiatives go. Now, what we want to add is a bunch of policies. And let me start off by showing you a default one. And this is kind of where I got the idea. So we'll search for diagnostics and we're going to look at deploy diagnostic settings for network security groups. And this is in all of your subscriptions so you can see all this code. So this is not exactly ARM template code. This is policy code. Okay, But the important thing in this policy is that this policy has a particular effect. And that effect is down here. And that is the deploy if not exists. Now we've covered this very briefly in the past, so I want to dig into this a little more because deploy if not exist is really cool and it's going to help us to do all of this work. So we can see that by clicking on assign and first thing we need is a scope okay, and then we need a name and then we also need a existing resource group and then we could just simply assign it. Now we have this button here that is grayed out and this is the managed identity and this is where the permissions to do this comes from because as we said we're deploying resources in order to deploy resources we need permissions so let's go to the documentation and explain this a little more so in the docs here first we're going to go to products and then we're going to go to management tools and azure policy 
and under policy, I'm going to go to concepts and understand policy effects. And the one we're interested in is deploy if not exists. And there is a quick link for that. So these are all of the parameters related to building a deploy if not exists policy. And we can do this again through ARM templates, which is what we're going to do today. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here, including a role definition ID. Okay. So this role ID is where we get the permissions from. And that's what the managed ID box down here is referring to and it just needs a location to store this managed ID. So if we look at this code sample, this is a little bit easier to see. So basically this policy takes effect against the type of resource of a SQL Server database with the effect of deploy this thing, whatever it is, if this does not exist. So we're going to do a query against the database and see if this resource exists if so, we're not going to touch it. If it doesn't exist, we'll deploy it. And the type specifically that we're looking at to deploy is TDE. And then we have our role IDs. And the way that this is structured is it's looking at your subscription for the provider of the role definition ID. And so we need a role ID GUID. So where do we get that? Well, let's duplicate this tab and we'll go back to the main page of the docs under products. And this time we'll go to all. And then over here on the side, we have role based access control. And then under here, we'll go to references for built in roles. And these are all of the built in roles in Azure. Now, these built in roles each have an ID. So if we go to contributor here, that's the ID. So that's what we need to plug in to the code here in order to make this work. Now this is related to SQL Server. So the role we'd be looking for is the SQL database contributor. So that would be the ID that we need to make this policy work. Now, once we get past that stuff, that's around how to build the policy. Then we have the deployment section. And this is kind of like building inline templates that we've done before. And if you're unfamiliar with that, you can look at our automation series. So basically what we're doing is we're passing this parameter and this parameter is then going to uh, be what is injected into the template here as a parameter. And then we have our normal template layout. So schema, version, parameters, variables could be here, resources, outputs could be here. But this is what we're deploying. We're deploying the resource of grab the full database name slash current and we're deploying TDE and make sure that it is enabled. And that's what this policy would do. So with that basic understanding, let's go over to Visual Studio. This looks a little different than how I usually work in Visual Studio. And that's because, as I said, even though this is JSON, this isn't exactly an ARM template. This is a policy template. So we have no JSON outline to be working with in this case. Now, this particular template does not require any parameters and does not have any outputs. And I'll have this template linked below in the description. It'll be up on my GitHub so you can get access to it and install this yourself. So I'll just go over this briefly. So in the resources section, we have a lot of resources. In fact, we have about 47 policies that we're going to be deploying, as well as one initiative. All of these structures are basically the same for each one of these. So there's a lot of repetition. But basically, we have a type that we're deploying, which is a policy definition with a name. This is for a network card. And we have some properties in describing what's going on. Then we have an input parameter, and that is for our log analytics workspace. Now we have the policy section. And so the rules are if we find a network interface, then we will deploy if not exist. So what are we deploying? Well, that's further down here in the deployment section. And that is where we have our actual ARM template that's going to do our deployment of this particular resource, which is network interface diagnostics. And it's going to set up our metrics. So the one other thing to point out here is our role definition ID. And in this case, we have this particular ID. It's the contributor ID that we saw in our documentation. Okay, so like we saw earlier, the metrics is the only thing that we have for network cards. So it's called all metrics with no time. It is enabled, but there's no retention information because there simply isn't any of that information available. That is not the same for all resources. For example, here we have a virtual network gateway. And in the template section where we're deploying this, the resource here has a lot more data. So we have all metrics along with gateway diagnostics and other kinds of diagnostics that all are set to true. 
So it just depends on the particular resource type. Then the last thing that we have here is a policy set definition, and this refers to the initiative. So again, properties around what we're doing, a parameter for the Log Analytics workspace name, and this is the policy definition section of the initiative, and that's the rest of this code. And basically that's where we are linking all of the policies that we just created and linking them to this initiative. Okay, so with that, let's go to PowerShell and deploy this. And this script will be up on my GitHub as well. So I just want to run again the role definition ID here. And that's so you can see another way to find out what this role is instead of the docs. So that's our contributor. And this bit of code is how we're going to install all of our policies. So let's clear that screen. And this will take uh, about 20 seconds to upload. All right, now that that's done, let's go back to the portal. And now we have an initiative from our subscription, and that is the collection of the 47 resources that we are going to deploy. So there they all are, and they're all deploy if not exist. So let's hit assign. And then we're gonna leave the scope here as this subscription with no exclusions. And then we have our one input parameter of the log analytics workspace. So for that, we'll just hit the drop down and we'll select our workspace and then we'll create our managed ID in East US and hit assign. Okay, that's assigned. If we go to our assignments and we can see there it is. And then if we go under compliance, we can see that we've not started our compliance check yet. All right, so it's been a little while and our policy has gone into effect. And we can see that we have 33% compliance. So let's take a look a little deeper. So out of all of these policies that we have deployed, they're all in compliance. And then we have our non-compliant policies for network, public IP, network security group, and virtual machine. So if we look at the non-compliant resources, we see that they are all pre-existing resources in a resource group. And this was expected behavior because none of these resources have anything done to them yet. They've not been updated. They haven't been scanned yet by the engine. So this is expected that they are non-compliant and they will become compliant when we do an enforcement or make an update or change to these resources. So as a demonstration here now that this works, we're going to create some new resources and we've got our test group here. That's where we're going to do it. Uh, this modic uh, resource group is where everything we just saw that was non-compliant because we haven't touched that stuff. So we'll go into test here, hit add, and we'll just create a new Ubuntu server. Okay, so our VM is done and let's go to that resource group. So we can see the VM in place and if we go back to the Azure monitor and let's just focus in on that subscription. Okay, then we have our test resource items that we've just deployed and they're currently disabled. So the policy engine has not run on them yet, but it will in the next couple minutes. Okay, it's been a few minutes now, and you can see we've got five deployments, and let's go see what's going on there. So we have our deployment around our Ubuntu system, but then we have these policy deployments. So if we click on one of these and look at the template, we can see that this is adding the diagnostic settings, or in this case, our network security group. So let's go back to the Azure monitor and refresh. And those are now enabled. So by using policy, we've now set up our systems to automatically go to our log analytics workspace so our data can be centrally set up so that monitoring and reporting can be done as well as this enables you to do many other things with policy all through automation, creating them as template files, uploading them so you can customize them, do whatever it is you want to do. And then this extends even further. And so we'll talk about that in one of our upcoming videos. So I hope that you have enjoyed this look at using policies as well as the automation of writing them as templates, uploading them to the portal and having them do a lot of the work for you for setting up and managing the cloud. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button as well as the thumbs up if this was a cool video and click on the notification bell so that you can get our new videos when they come out, which is about once a week. Give us some comments below about things that you're interested in so we can keep the content uh, fresh and relevant for you. Thanks for joining us today and happy learning.